Hello GCSE and welcome to this video on feedback and guidance. So today I'm going to take you through some crucial parts of the GCSE course which focus on athlete feedback, coach feedback and guidance and how that helps the overall performance. But first of all, there's, there's kind of five reasons um, why coaches might think about giving feedback. The first one is it depends very much on the ability of the athlete as to how much guidance and how much feedback coaches give. Um, a very, very able athlete at the top end of the pyramid will be able to receive more feedback and take it on board more than somebody perhaps at the bottom end. So they've got that ability to be able to understand the skill, the concepts, and take more on board than perhaps a novice athlete might do. The second thing is the personality of the athlete. The coach really needs to know their athlete quite well. And they need to know their personality. Are they somebody that will take offense if guidance and feedback is given? Are they somebody that would flourish and really enjoy and benefit from having that feedback? So it's all about knowing the personality type of the athlete, which is really crucial. The other thing as well is that the, we spoke in a previous video about skill levels and the harder the skill, the more feedback and the more guidance is required because they'll need that instant, instantaneous feedback loop about how to improve and how, how to get better at the skill that they're doing. And the last aspect is the facilities. Do the facilities allow for adequate feedback and guidance you know is there an area that they can actually perform in and evaluate their performance in so these four aspects here are absolutely crucial when we're talking about feedback and guidance so let's focus on guidance guidance there's four variations of guidance and it depends on the coach depends on the situation depends on the ability of the athlete the personality the skill and the facilities as to which of these types of guidance you use the first one is the most common formed type of guidance, and it's verbal guidance. So verbal is what comes from the mouth, how the coach feeds back to the athlete verbally, and this can have advantages and disadvantages. One of the advantages of verbal feedback is it can be quite instant, it can be quite to the point, um, and it can, be quite, it can be a conversation, it can be a two-way dialogue between the coach and between the athlete. A disadvantage of verbal is potentially it can be taken the wrong way, if there hasn't been a good thought process going into what's relayed to the athlete, so it could offend the athlete, the coach potentially, and they could get into a verbal conflict with the athlete, which is probably best avoided. So verbal feedback has its advantages and it has its disadvantages. The next type of feedback that we talk about, um, sorry, guidance we talk about, is visual guidance. And this one is really key. They say that a picture paints a thousand words and by showing the athlete exactly what they're doing, you can break down that subroutine and they can almost coach themselves to a certain extent. So let's take a situation where an athlete keeps performing um, a skill wrong, um, and in particular it's a part of a subroutine that's wrong. Potentially they could have it filmed by the coach. The coach doesn't necessarily need to say anything and then they could play that video back to them and they could say to the athlete, where do you think you're going wrong in this process? The athlete can then see it for themselves rather than being uh, told it verbally and they can say okay subroutine part three that's the part that i got wrong that's what i need to work on so it tends to motivate them a little bit more so the positive about visual feedback is they can see it picture paints a thousand words and they can fix the problems for themselves with the support and the guidance of the coach as well okay so we've got verbal and visual feedback uh, sorry, guidance again, they tend to be our most important two. But we've got two others as well. We've got manual guidance and we've got mechanical guidance, which are quite similar, but slightly different. So first of all, manual um, guidance is when the coach actually physically helps the athlete do a sport. So it's quite a hands-on approach. So the positives of this, if, if they keep getting something wrong, or it's a very complex, difficult skill in quite an open environment, then potentially the coach could go in there and they could, they could help the athlete manually try and achieve something. So if it's a forward roll or a somersault on a trampoline, the coach might get in there and help support the athlete so they feel safe and they feel secure in the movement. Sometimes there's a need to get mechanical um, guidance involved. And when we talk about mechanics, we tend to talk about machines, not human entities. Um, so it's not necessarily AI, but it is certainly a machine to help. So something that comes to mind is a tennis ball serving uh, machine that fires tennis balls consistently at the same pace. Um, the athlete, the tennis player can get, then get used to that. Sometimes we use mechanical guidance in swimming pools for disabled swimmers to get them into the water safely and out of the water safely. And we can also use it in trampolining. Um, you see those harnesses that they have that are attached to the ceiling. And if they're trying a Varani or a complex one and a half twist, 
they might use mechanical guidance to take the danger element away. So both manual and mechanical are used for safety for quite high complex skills that have a danger element. So we've discussed guidance, which is this section here, which it goes hand in hand with feedback. So we need to talk about feedback now. Now feedback is essentially being given some information on how to improve your performance. And at elite level, this is crucial, particularly if you're gonna go on to be a podium potential athlete, win medals. So feedback is a really, really important thing and coaches need to use it and athletes need to receive it. So it's a two-way process. You send information, but you also receive information. Feedback comes in four different varieties. So the first one is it's intrinsic. And you may have come across the word intrinsic before when talking about motivation. So intrinsic comes from within. It comes from within the human body. So I want to win because I want to be the best. That's an intrinsic, self-motivated form of feedback. So when we come to talk about um, intrinsic, intrinsic coming from within, the athlete will know and feel how they've got on in that performance. They might be quite pleased with that performance. They might be quite disappointed with that performance. But ultimately, they will know exactly how they feel and they'll know what they need to do to improve. So a coach doesn't need to do much with intrinsic feedback. They perhaps just need to listen and perhaps suggest some, uh, some things that they can do to improve in the future. However, there's another form that's kind of the opposite. We talk about continuums in, in sports psychology. At the opposite end of the continuum is extrinsic feedback. So extrinsic, EX, tends to come from external factors. Um, and that can be feedback from another person. So most of the time that will be the coach themselves, the extrinsic factor. Sometimes it can be another performer. Maybe it's an opponent in tennis um, um, in a post-match interview. Maybe it's a teammate. Maybe it's the captain of a team. Maybe it's, it's, it's a parent at a youth level. It's somebody who gives you external feedback about your performance. So they might say things, okay, you, know, you held the ball really well in that football game, but you didn't track back enough. And maybe you didn't see that, um, on the intrinsic aspect, but they noted it because they were watching the game and they can give you extrinsic feedback, which can be quite a positive thing. The other two types of uh, feedback are quite complicated. We've got concurrent feedback, which is quite a mouthful. Um, if you remember the word current, that means right now, in the here and now. Concurrent feedback means feedback that you get during the event. It happens during the event. So if you're playing a basketball game, a handball game, the coach is screaming out sort of... Um, I was going to say um, support comments, uh, positive things, tactics, strategies. Concurrent feedback is that constant loop of being given information whilst the event is taking place. So this concurrent takes place during the event. Whereas terminal feedback, our last type, happens at the end. The word terminal, if you're going to departure terminal, it's the end. It's the end of the journey. Okay, so the word terminal is ending. This happens after the event. So this is after the full time whistle, the coach will sit down with you and they'll go through the performances and they'll give you feedback after the event has taken place. Thank you very much.